Hey everyone, this is Eran from Sternfix for Motionworks with another short tip for the A to Z effect series. And this time we're going to cover the CC Blobilize effect, which is one of my favorites because it is simple to use and it can create some unique looks. I will show you at least two, maybe three examples and let you be the judge if you may want to use it in your next production. So you can find it under the distort category here and let's just apply it CC Blobilize. The minute you apply it, you will get some kind of Blobilize effect. Let me run preview a few seconds here so you can get the idea of how it may look by the default settings. And of course, you've got the options to change the blobiness, light and shading as most of other psycho effects will allow you to use. So we'll touch more later upon the light and the shading, which is pretty much self-explanatory, but I will cover them in a moment. Let's just concentrate here for a moment for the blob layer, which is also going to be covered in the next example, but you can choose which layer you want actually to create the blob. And here you've got also a property which will allow you to change which of the channels is being used in order to create this effect. So you can see that as I move from red, green, blue, and if you have an alpha channel, it will change, of course, the look of the effects. Well, this is actually quite nice. It almost looks like there is some kind of drops, uh, liquid drops on the screen. Well, you might find this one useful. The default setting is to use the lightness of this effect, but if you are going to use it as I will show you in a moment, I'll recommend to change it to the luminance which gives a little bit of a milder or a, a softer look. Of course, you can change the softness here. So you can do it more or less softness. And this is the parameter that you might want to use if you want to, once again, use this as a transition. And this will be the first example. So let's just find a sweet spot when nothing is on the screen. So in this case, it might be 100. Record a keyframe here and I will do it very, very slowly. So I will maybe move to, I guess, maybe around three or maybe four seconds and just make sure that we will see everything. And I'll create a quick run preview to see it as a transition. And you can see you can get a few drops on the screen and then suddenly it fills it up. So of course you can press U and show the keyframes. And if you want to smooth a little bit the transition, you can always press Shift F9 to easy ease in to the last keyframe. Another option will be to try and change the softness here. And this will give it actually a more glassiness look, which works very well, very interesting using this clip. But of course it is something which related to taste. So it's up to you how you want to use this as a transition. And by the way, just a short quick tip here. If you right click on any of the effect parameters for any effects in After Effects and ask it to show the edit value, you can actually see the value range from zero to 500. And in some cases you can also define which will be your slider range as well. So this is just a nice way to handle these effects or just to make sure that you crank it all the way. But in this case, if I will really crank it all the way, we will probably lose the effects and it will just looks, you know, like less drops on the screen. Let me just run preview it once again very quickly. So you can see it's very quickly um, revealing itself, which can also be quite nice if you ask me. But I will say that something in the middle, maybe around 40, which we can see a little bit more drops here will look more nice. And if you want to change it so the effect will not be so harsh, just start with few drops on the screen and then let it fill itself. So this is something which you might want to use this effect as a transition. And I have to warn you that if you use it like this, it's not enough just to use the effects because if we are going to go to the point where it almost done or done here in terms of our keyframe, just dismiss the effect and 
bring it once more to the screen, enable and disable it, you can see that there is a difference. So if you really want to use it and come back to return to the final uh, clip without any effects, I would recommend to use the famous CC composite. Just put it underneath, disable the RGB only, and make sure that you also give it a little bit of an opacity change, just few keyframes or two keyframes actually, from let's say here, which is almost the end, and maybe here to 100%. Let's just preview the end, or not the end, the whole transition once again, and using the combination of these two effects, we can really uh, dissolve it to its original uh, state. I mean, the clip, of course. So this is how this would look with the CC composite. So just a little touch, you know, the little, the small details uh, can make a big difference. All right, so this is, of course, the obvious uh, way to use this effect, but I want to show you something which is, to my opinion at least, a little bit more interesting. Okay, so let's move to the next composition, which hosts already two layers. One is this great aerial shot of a mountain, I guess from a helicopter. This is from Artbeats. And more information about these two clips right at the end of this short tip. And of course, there is a top edge text on it. So obviously you can take the text and let's once again open our distort category and just apply the CC blobilize to the text itself, which does give it an interesting look, I have to say. Obviously, this text holds an alpha channel, so I think it will be wise to change the property here to alpha channel. And if you're just going to look at it, you can always uh, come back to the effect and play a little bit with the cutaway and the softness just in order to bring back or see more of the original texture of the lettering. And this almost give it like a feel, a look and feel like an old type writer uh, look, something with a, a nice top edge to it. However, I'm not going to apply the CC blobilize to the text. I'm going to use the text as a source for the effect, which I think will give us more interesting results. So I will turn off the eye, select my second layer, Command or Control D in order to duplicate myself a copy. And to the copy above, I will apply the CC Blobilize effect. Of course, now it will Blobilize this mountain. However, we will open the Blobiness and under the Blob layer, we will choose for it the top edge you can choose either the lightness, the luminance, or the alpha. In this case, the three modes will give you more or less the same thing, the same look. And of course, you can change the cutaway and the softness just in order for you to get the exact look that you need. And this is great because it actually used this layer, this text layer, as a displacement map for everything that we see. And it really, really makes this effect looks very, very interesting. See how the background is refracting and reflecting in this text layer. It makes it very believable, very true, very realistic. And I think that you can find a useful usage for it. If you want to make it a little bit more uh, integrated to the shot, just find the direction where the light is coming from, open the light property. And of course you can use the distant light or flip to the point light, which will actually give you a point light direction. And I think that in this case, I will just place it here and maybe try to just move it a little bit from left to right, just in order for the letters to mimic the light that we have on the shot. So just quickly, I will create a keyframe for the light position. And let's move a little bit further. And I think that we will just change it here. So we'll have some kind of a moving light. I think that maybe a little bit down here will create some more interesting effect. And you can always change the light intensity just to make your text a little bit more pronounced on the screen. Basically, it's up to you, but I think that we are getting somewhere here and we've got an interesting look just 
with one small effect or single effect. It's not maybe it's not so small, but it's you know at least very simple. And let me just run preview a few seconds of it so you can get a sense of how this might look. And once again, I want to point your attention to the reflectivity and the refraction that we are getting here on the letters, especially where the original lens flare of the shot is happening. So I think that this should be enough. And it looks very, very interesting. And if you want, you can, of course, select your top edge text. In my case, of course, it names the name is top edge. And you can also change the position of the text just to make it a little bit more sophisticated. So just in order to show you uh, what we will achieve by doing so, I will just place this text maybe a little bit higher here, just create two small keyframes. And you can see how the blobilize effect will take the video image and warp it nicely around the edge of our displacement layer, which is the top edge text here. So I think that this is it. Go ahead and try your own creative stuff using the blobilize effect. And if you want to use it with the clips that I showed here, the two clips from Artbeats, these are coming for free with every purchase of my new training, the best of Premiere Pro. And you see there is a special offer from Artbeats, which will uh, get you those two clips, which are value of almost $600. But the real value is the training itself, of course. So if you want to harness Premiere Pro and find out a lot of things that you might have missed using this amazing editing software, Check out this training and I promise you that you'll discover new things. If you want to just take a sneak peek inside, here below there are three samples from the DVD itself. All right, so until next time we'll meet, this is Eran Stern for Motionworks. Have fun, be creative, and I'll see you soon.